one of the most important antenatal factors which help in prognostication of CDH is the lung head ratio. So basically it's a ratio of the area of contralateral lung to the fetal head circumference measured somewhere close to 32 weeks of gestation. The area is calculated by taking into account the perpendicular or the vertical and transverse measurements of the contralateral lung at the same cut where four chambers of the heart are seen. So at the cut or at the level where the four chambers of the heart are seen, you will be able to visualize the contralateral lung. So we take into account the perpendicular or the vertical and transverse diameters of the contralateral tongue is used to calculate its area and this area is divided by the head circumference. If the lung head ratio is more than 1, it would mean an increased chances of survival or a good prognosis. If the value is less than 0.85, that is said to be 100% mortality. There is a major problem that we encountered with lung head ratio. You find that the lung head ratio seems to vary with gestational age. So subsequently to prevent this fallacy, we have decided to bring about, look for the observed lung head ratio and compare it with the expected lung head ratio for that particular gestational age. If its value is less than 25%, there is an increased mortality. There are other an anatomical indices, for example, like Meggoon index, wherein you have the right pulmonary arterial diameter plus the left pulmonary arterial diameter is divided by the descending iota diameter. If the value is less than 1.31, it would mean a poor prognosis because automatically imagine if the right and left pulmonary arterial diameters are not significant, if they are collapsed or smaller in size, that would mean that the pulmonary arterial pressure is possibly high. So, because of which the blood is not flowing adequately through it. So, if the uh, right pulmonary arterial plus the left pulmonary arterial diameter divided by the uh, descending iota diameter is less than, the ratio is less than 1.31, carries a poor prognosis. Similarly, we have the pulmonary arterial index wherein the right pulmonary arterial area plus the left pulmonary artery area is divided by the body surface area. If the value is less than 90, it carries a poor prognosis. There are other physiological factors or prognostic factors. So if you have a preductal saturation oxygenation of less than 90 percent, it would mean that there is severe pulmonary hypoplasia. Similarly, there are four important indices or gradients which would help in assessing the physiological status of that particular child, giving us an idea regarding whether that child is, uh, is, has good prognosis or poor prognosis. So you have the alveolar arterial oxygen gradient, which is nothing but it is, it is got by uh, multiplying 713 into the FiO2 minus the partial pressure of arterial carbon, arterial partial pressure of carbon dioxide divided by 0.8 minus the partial pressure of oxygen. Ventilation index. Ventilation index is got by multiplying a difference between peak inspiratory pressure with peak end expiratory pressure by the respiratory rate. So, respiratory rate into the difference between peep and peep. If the value is less than 1000, it carries a good prognosis. Modified ventilation index because what happens is one of the most important factors is hypercapnia. So, when that needed to be taken into account while prognosticating the child. So, a modified ventilation index was made wherein you have the respiratory rate is multiplied by the peak inspiratory pressure into the partial pressure of carbon dioxide divided by 1000. If the value is less than 40, it carries a good prognosis. But the most commonly used index for us in plaque practice is at least is basically the oxygenation index or OI as it is called. So, an OI is got by using as a, at the by multiplying the mean airway pressure by the F, with the FiO2 requirement of the child into 100 divided by the partial pressure of oxygen. If the value is less than 6, it carries a good prognosis. So these are the four physiological prognosticating indices to, pro, to determine whether the particular child has a good prognosis or a poor prognosis. Now, what are the fetal intervention techniques that are available? So this man called Michael Harrison initially did a CDH repair by performing a lower cesarean section in a pregnant lady whose child was diagnosed to have a CDH. Now 
But the problem was when he, when he went in for an open repair, the chances of uh, res, uh, distress, fetal distress and missed or abortion subsequently, fetal distress and loss of pregnancy was very high. So hence, he, this was given up and a person called Dr. Wilson tried to do another thing. He tried to plug the fetal trachea because what he thought was that the most important factor which determines whether this particular child is going to have a good prognosis or bad prognosis is the lung development that occurs. So if the lungs can be stimulated to grow, then the effects of this particular condition of congenital diaphragmatic hernia can be reduced to a large extent, increasing the survival rates. So to promote lung development, what he did was he plucked the fetal trachea to promote lung growth. Now, this was further enhanced or this was further modified to do what is called as the fetal endoscopic tracheal occlusion. So fetal endoscopic tracheal occlusion as you can see here by using a fetoscope there is a balloon occlusion or balloon is inflated within the baby's trachea to inflate it and to occlude the trachea. This is said to facilitate lung growth by increasing the pressures. Now there is a randomized control trial going on to, in, to assess whether feto or fetal endoscopic tracheal occlusion is an effective modality in improving prognosis in fetuses with CDH. It is still going on. Now, Harrison is one person similar to Harrison here. Harrison is one person who has done a study with regard to feto and he has found that the results are equivalent to doing a conventional repair postnatally. So, coming on to the management of a neonate with the congenital diaphragmatic hernia. Now, it is to be remembered that just because a fetus has a congenital diaphragmatic hernia, it is not a contraindication for a normal vaginal delivery. We can always proceed with a normal vaginal delivery because the difference in prognosis or uh, prognosis between a child who is LD, serious child is born by a, via naturalis or by normal delivery to a child born via LSES is very marginal. It's not much of a difference in prognosis. The idea is to keep, is to delay delivery to as close to term as possible, so as to facilitate as much lung development as possible. Devel delivery should ideally be conducted in a tertiary care center with a good neonatology and pediatric surgical facility. A multidisciplinary approach is very much the order of the day. Elective intubation is generally done in all children with uh, left sided, with say a congenital diaphragmatic hernia. The dictum was before the child takes the first breath, the child has to be intubated. Once the child is intubated, gentle ventilation is again a very, very important thing. That is, you should prevent barotrauma and should not aggressively overventilate the child. No bag and mask ventilation should be done because bag and mask ventilation tends to produce gastric dilatation. So, gastric dilatation will again inhibit, reduce oxygenation and can worsen the child's condition. So, no bag and mask ventilation should be done. An excess chest and abdomen should be taken in children suspected to have a congenital diaphragmatic hernia. A 2D echo can be done to look for features of pulmonary arterial hypertension and also to look for the presence of associated cardiac anomalies. Resuscitation is very, very important with regard to congenital diaphragmatic hernia.